Hello and welcome back to the BE iLab channel. We're now stepping into the exciting realm of model selection and training. This stage is pivotal as it determines the success of our land use and land cover classification. So let's get started. Now that we've prepared our dataset, let's transition into the exciting phase of model selection and training. But before we delve into the details, we must import the necessary packages. We've imported key metrics for model evaluation like accuracy, classification report, and F1 score from scikit-learn. Additionally, we've brought in versatile classifiers such as support vector classifier, k-nearest neighbors, logistic regression, random forest, and decision tree. To add a visual touch to our analysis, we've enlisted Seaborn, a powerful data visualization library. After importing the necessary packages, we will select a suitable machine learning algorithm for our land use land cover classification task. Here, we defined a list containing a list of classifiers with specified parameters. The first classifier is the Support Vector Machine or SVM. This classifier is a powerful supervised algorithm that works best on smaller datasets but on complex ones. SVM can be used for regression and classification tasks. In the scikit-learn package, SVC is for the classification task and SVR is for the regression task. SVC has three parameters, gamma, C, and kernel. Gamma influences the shape of the decision boundary. In this example, we set the gamma to auto, allowing the algorithm to determine the optimal gamma value based on the input data. Next, the C parameter controls the regularization strength. A smaller C encourages a smoother decision boundary, while a larger C aims to classify all training points correctly. The kernel is the last parameter. This parameter takes data as input and transforms it into the required form. These functions can be of different types, for example, linear, nonlinear, polynomial, radial basis function, and sigmoid. Moving forward, let's introduce our second classifier, the K nearest neighbors or KNN. We've configured the K neighbors classifier with the following parameters. The N underscore neighbors parameter, set to 10, dictates the number of neighbors considered for each data point's classification, influencing the model's sensitivity to local patterns. Meanwhile, the weights parameter, set to uniform, assigns equal weight to all neighbors in the decision making process. The logistic regression algorithm is the next one. Here, we use the LBFGS solver and a default regularization parameter C. Moving into the random forest classifier, recognized as one of the most popular algorithms for land use land cover classification. This ensemble learning method constructs a multitude of decision trees during training and outputs the mode of the classes of the individual trees. In this configuration, the N underscore estimators parameter determines the number of trees in the forest, and by setting it to 300, we create a diverse and robust ensemble, enhancing the model's ability to generalize. Additionally, the max underscore depth parameter controls the maximum depth of individual trees and is set to none, allowing the trees to expand until they contain less than min underscore samples underscore split samples. The min underscore samples underscore split and min underscore samples underscore leaf parameters set the minimum number of samples required to split an internal node and the minimum number of samples required to be at a leaf node, respectively. With min underscore samples underscore split equals 2 and min underscore samples underscore leaf equals 1, our configuration allows for more fine-grained decision trees and individual samples isolated in their leaf nodes. Finally, we have the decision tree classifier, characterized by its simplicity with default tree parameters. Now that we have our machine learning models defined, the next step is to evaluate their performance on the validation set. We've implemented a function called score underscore model to streamline this process. Let's take a closer look at how it works. This function takes the training data, training labels, validation data, validation labels, and a machine learning model as input. The function trains the model on the training data and prints the accuracy score based on predictions made on the validation data. Subsequently, we iterate through the list of models, calling the score underscore model function for each one to assess its accuracy on the validation set. This step is crucial for understanding how well our models generalize to unseen data. These accuracy scores will guide us in selecting the most effective model for our land use and land cover classification task. 
As you can see the random forest model with an accuracy of 89.63% had the best performance among other models. Therefore, we will use this model for our land use land cover classification task. Now that everything is ready, we proceed to train the random forest algorithm using our meticulously curated training set. Please note that the duration of this process may vary, taking minutes to complete based on the number of training data points specified in previous cells. Now, here's a challenge for you. Your challenge is to research and apply one hot encoding to pre-process the data set for our land use and land cover classification task. Once you've completed this pre-processing step, repeat the model selection process using the newly pre-processed data. We invite you to share your observations and findings in the comments section below. Thank you for joining us on this tutorial journey. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. You can access the code examples used in this tutorial on our GitHub page. Our exploration into land use and land cover classification using machine learning algorithms doesn't conclude here. In our next video, we will explain the accuracy assessment phase of our models. So, stay tuned for the next video, and we look forward to having you with us again.